online sometimes is that you get this thing to go. Oh, I actually had the wrong controller. My fault. <laughs> had the wrong controller. My fault. Try again. So that way they don't interfere. Uh, interfere. So here we go. Make sure we're in cover two man. Confirmation. Here we go. This is what normally happens online, right? Besides getting sacked. Come on, yo. Let's not take a sack here. That happens too, which we're going to discuss that a little bit later with offensive linemen in this game. This is what happens in... Oh my goodness, they're giving up another sack. Here, I had to throw it in this particular instance because I'm getting hurried. Come on, offensive line. Please hold up for this experiment real quick. Just drag him or whatever. Oops. And most of the time, hey, well, you got hands on it, and that's the problem. Now, if you do it for man to man, here we go. Here's what normally happens. And Palmer throws a bad ball though. Come on, Palmer, really? Let's go, mirror, All right. Mirror, mirror. Defensive line here. Go. That's what normally happens. And then you're wondering what happened. I had two high safety. Why isn't my guys reacting? Here's why. Here's you can't make this stuff up. You cannot make this stuff up. Where you at? This is zoom up. I wish it was a faster zoom. So here we go. Like I said, guys is being left by himself, thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. John Brown's Eve about to be even. He's about to be leaving here. Don't don't know where he's going. Boop. Like I said, it took him about. Uh, let's see. Like I said, he might not have the best awareness, but even still, that happens with the better safeties in the game. Look at this. Look at the way he turns. Like, why are you turning that way? Why are you turning... <laughs> why are you turning that way? Look, this is two man under. The best coverage in the game. Like I said, if anybody has a, a fast receiver in this game, they could pretty much, like I said, Perriman, John Brown may not have as much speed, but it's, the results are pretty much the same. Like I said, I know Cromartie doesn't have the best man coverage, but or the best speed, but that's inexcusable for a too high. That has nothing that's to do with EA design the game. Players will not act the same every play, no matter what you think they should play like. I mean, <clears throat> I know it's EA design, but it shouldn't happen like that, which makes me very curious about if the patch will happen or will the patch address stuff like that to where the safety is not acting completely lost, even in a two man under <clears throat> or any deep blue like the ones you see on your well, the ones you see on your screen like that. And two high safeties and stuff like that. There should be no reason, especially if it's just one route. Like, if anything, <clears throat> what should happen is that if I can do this the right way, I'm just gonna spotlight John Brown here. What should be happening is that. Well, uh, we don't. If y'all just block for like two seconds, y'all. What should be happening is that I don't know what the safety is doing in that particular instance. He just is completely wow. Okay. I guess, yeah. I guess. Spotlight X receiver. Actually, sorry, I messed that one up. Reset, reset. All right, pinch line. Yeah. 
what should be happening is that the safety should already be acting like that. Well, if I didn't dive down, <clears throat> he should automatically be leaving as soon as he realizes there's one streak up the field. Like I said, I accidentally hit the X button with him, so don't mind that. Shading over time. Like I said, we got all... I, I'm down with it. Like I said, in this particular instance, the safety should be acting, reacting like this. Like I said, I dove down with him, so that was an accident on my part. But you see how fast he reacted? You know, he had to, we had to spotlight John Brown just for him to react like that. And that's what should be happening normally in a two-man under like that, especially with that deep high safety like that. That's what normally should be happening. Like, no matter... We shouldn't have to spotlight John Brown. Like I said, I dove down accidentally. But you see, he was in a position to where... The lobster really wasn't an option at that point. Even over top, it's kind of tricky too. Like I said, my philosophy is right now I'm testing the fact that, oops, you shade over top or you sh whatever you decide to shade, you do it twice. So in this particular instance, it's two over top coverages. <clears throat> Once again, actually no, sorry, lock Gresham, lock floor or just drag floor or whatever. I just can take him off so that way he's not. That's enough. So here we go. Even over top coverage sometimes, he's still kind of getting beat. Like even though it's a late throw right now, but you see what I'm saying. Just showing you like how he's reacting. Here we go. Blue, yeah, I agree. See, so watch. Like I said, we're not throwing the ball. We threw the ball extra late on purpose, though. But watch. Even sometimes on overtop coverage, he should be going. He should be in full out sprint right here. He should be turning <clears throat> to John Brown, and that should be like he should be in sprint mode right here. But even still, he's turning the opposite way. John, once again, that could have been picks. That could have been six right there. That could have simply been six, and, and that's all she wrote right there. So I don't know. And like I said, we've been experimenting with like you know safeties with ninety nine awareness, safeties with. You know, 99 play rec, and we still get the same thing, which is a little bit bothersome in my in my mind. So once again, we'll do over top twice. Oops. Just to tell us safeties over top coverage. And like I said, Cromartie's there, but Gilchrist isn't. So let me show you. Now, the thing with the funny thing about over top coverage is that, and I found this out by laughing this today or experimenting like this earlier today. And I was telling Simba this too when I was on stream with me and him is that when you play over top coverage and man to man, like cover two man, like you see right here. The thing is that if you're going to do this, you're going to need like speedy receivers to do it because, or not speedy receivers, speedy corners to do, or corners that have decent speed to keep up with the uh, the wide receiver here because watch how Cromartie is actually going about this. Instead of going on like a side of John Brown, he is literally over the top of John Brown, which is good and everything like that. They don't call pass interference, so I guess it really doesn't matter. If you really want to stop the lob street like that, that's kind of a way to do it. But even still, I'm still worried that the safety doesn't react. Like I said, the corners will. The corners is doing his job, playing over the top coverage. He's literally over the top of John Brown. But the safety, the fact that the safety is not still doing this karaoke NBA drill karaoke shuffle still bothers me in this particular situation. So what I have, what do I do? Or excuse me, I found that shading over top. I got aggressive call more because I felt like the defense plays behind the receiver. So what I do is play off coverage and shade underneath. Yeah, we were laughing that too. So, so what you do is you play off, shade underneath, shade underneath. Like I said, for me, double shading seems to work better, more effectively. Right, 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 right. 
So you play in underneath. We're just going to chuck it up there. Now, see, I think I see what you're saying here. I think I see what you're saying here. Like I said, we're just looking at the uh, one side of the field here, but... And realistically, that would mean that Cromar is kind of slowing down and allowing John Brown to get a little bit ahead of him because he's playing underneath, essentially. Like I said, the only problem is, once again, the safety doesn't react. And like I said, that's a bad, it's a horribly underthrown ball by Carson Palmer and everything like that. But you, there's a little bit of danger with that. A little bit of danger. Not a lot, but just a little bit here. So let me see. Let's do something here. Let's do... Let's put Revis on that side, so that way we have more one-on-one -on -one examples here. Why do we have a backup quarterback? Package. I don't know, maybe I actually hit, hit a button. So, four verts, CB flip, Darrell Revis is on that side. Yeah, trash shading outside. Like here's what I here's what I've been learning to do. When especially like you like I said, you see the situation, let's say it's like third and long, right? And our opponent has to get to the fifty to get a first down. And let's say if we know for a fact that he's gonna chuck it up to and try to outrun our receiver. Sometimes what I like to do, right, and that's, that's what I'm gonna do from now on, at least, is when I call two man under, if you got the the coverage, excuse me, the the corners to do this. Uh, you press, you shade outside twice, and hopefully, if this works properly, then you should see something like this happening. Where they're shading to the outside, and they're forcing your that receiver to run inside and towards the safety. So I'll show you what I mean if you didn't catch what's going on there. So watch Revis here. This wants to get this is shading outside twice, not once. Do it twice. You see where what's happening going around right here? Like, watch. He's running right into the safety. He can't really. I mean, he could throw this if he really was confident. Like I said, if Gilchrist would actually react a little bit better, which he is once again too slow on, he can throw this. But if our safety had a little bit more speed and a little bit more awareness going on, that's shut down, and that's a lob streak that you see time and time again. Like I said, if the, we're just counting the fact that the safety actually has some speed on them and better awareness and stuff like that. But you see, you're forcing them to play, to catch the, uh, the lob streak in double coverage here. And like I said, sometimes it'll work if Carson Palmer probably threw it a little bit better or what have you. But even still, I'd rather have that. And like I said, better speed by my safety and better reaction by my strong safety here. Or my free safety, whoever that is. But than anything exactly exactly splash right hopefully that's an easy click on play so once again what i'm telling you is if you are watching this on a follow the channel b shading underneath so i'll show you too i'm, I'm gonna go over it. so for lob streaks whenever you do or even zones or whatever whatever you decide to do if any point in time where you feel like shading, shade twice. So in this instance, we're shading outside. So Y to the right, shake to the right. So you hear the click. And then one more time. And like I said, if you decide to press, you can do that too. But, you know, if you can do it again, just in case the commands didn't come through. Whatever your style is. What should happen is that we should get outside shading here going on. And this time we do. Our opponent decides to throw a lob streak. Revis got Revis got it. Once again, showing you on replay. Once again, we're we're ignoring the fact that our, we are going over the fact we beat this like a dead horse. Our safety is reacting too slow. But you see what I'm talking about. You see what I'm talking. About. Shading outside here. Once again, double shading. Outside coverage. He can't really throw that. 
Because once either two things are going to happen, he's going to throw it into double coverage, he's going to overthrow it, or if he does catch it, it should be popped out. Now, it may be a little bit difficult with Floyd here because obviously this corner, Buster Screen, is not, uh, doesn't have the best man coverage or whatever. But still, if we're just saying, like, we're just pretending this guy, John Brown, here is like Perriman and we're trying to stop Perriman at all times, and we know our opponent wants to throw to Perriman most of the time, it's still a pretty good idea to shade outside, especially since Perriman does have the best release. Like I said, either if he does throw to Floyd, I'm pretty sure the safety will come over and at least try to uh, influence the play there at that point. Like I said, hopefully at that point, that's an easy click on or let the CPU handle it, whatever you, de you deem is uh, necessary at that point. Shade over top, like I said, you can do the same thing too. We're going to show you what Scorpion <clears throat> Scorpion's talking about here with shading underneath. Um, It should translate. It honestly should. Uh, la, la, la. By the way, thanks for posting that in Zan stream because I used it again. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, the most frustrating part is when you play Madden, and I notice this a lot of times, and this is why I'm doing this particular thing, is that you say you do you say you shade you do it one time, right? You'd be like, yo, I shaded underneath. How is my flat not playing that? There's a flat playing there. Like, you know, where's my zones at? But what I noticed is when I was going to I was ranting I think probably two days ago about this game. And I was like, I wish my flat zones actually played it flat or whatever. And I did like shade underneath twice or whatever. And they actually did. I was like, holy shit, that actually worked. And then I did it more and more. And like I said, it's that's probably the method right now. Unless I don't know what they're going to do for the patch. If they change it, fine. We'll figure it out some way to still rocky. But for the time being, do shading twice. Yeah, Buster's probably got ter terrible uh, press. So here's what happens when you shade underneath, Scorpion, to, to your point. So if we do two man under once again, and we press, and we say shade underneath, shade underneath this time, what should happen is that Reva should be playing underneath, which he does, even though we get sacked here once again, which I'm about to start pinching my line. Right, so we're going to take uh, Floyd and stuff out of the way, Floyd and Feds out of the way, so they're not interfering with us. What we're trying to uh, show here. Shade underneath, shade underneath. You snap the ball. And unfortunately, that's a catch, show. But still, like I said, with the safety being a little bit better, like a little better safety out there than this Gilchrist kid, I think that's probably a deflection at best or maybe an interception. What's going to happen is that Revis is doing what you're telling them to do. It is play underneath the receiver you see how right now he's even though he's step by step he's kind of letting john brown go saying hey i'm playing underneath like i said john brown's obviously faster but still he's playing a little bit underneath him so if they if john brown were to do like a curl route or something like that if Revis is picking that off or maybe a tenant now he might be able to pick that off like i said Gilchrist is looking lost as usual but at the same time i would if I were to click on, I probably could get like a SWAT animation or a drop pick or something like that. But I'm just letting the computer do what it does here. Yeah, it's only when the corner is beat. So if we were to, let's try it on the other side here where we got the other brown here. Only if the corner is beat where you see the safety like bolt. And try to make a uh, try to go over there. So I'm trying to see if I can get John Brown or this other Brown to really. Hmm. That Kramari actually did a good job on that one. Let's see if I can make him. No, I can't. I can't motion snap that one. Uh, no. Go back. Go back. Go back. Snap the ball. Now see Cromartis and stuff, so the safety's not gonna go over there. Oh, never mind. Good recovery though. Wow. Like Cromartie. But it's only the safety rule bolt if the corner is beat. Like if the corner is like a couple steps behind, you'll see the safety actually like 
So, for instance, if Cromartie was actually beat here, which he's not here, he does actually a good job with man coverage. But say if Cromartie was, like, beat off the press or whatever, then that safety would literally be, like, at this point in time, like, if Cromartie was, like, about where that where this line is right here, the safety would bolt and actually try to go over and, and help and stuff like that. But since he's not, it's weird. It's like the safety just doesn't deem, like, the quarter needs any help and doesn't react in time. Like I said, Cromartie makes a great pick and everything like that. But still, that's if that was like a little bit more juice on that throw, that's six. The sky's the cushion. Yeah, awareness worked a little bit, probably the best. Huh? So if anything, you probably want those safeties with high awareness. Exactly, exactly, Flash, exactly. So the sky's the cushion? Sure. Uh let's see. Don't oh they don't have that type of button anymore. Um uh, give cushion, show blitz. I guess it's probably I don't think it really changes anything though. No. I don't think it does. I don't see the buttons really yeah, I don't see if really button to really disguise the cushion. No, what's up, Rev Trev? How's it going? Right, right. Oh, I'm not even paying attention on fantasy, honestly. Would Manly moving the safeties do anything except in, out, down, and back? Sure, we can try it. So we're going to move Gilchrist right here. Move Allen over here. All right, so let's move him down. So, once again, shading twice, which is the Y button. Um, let's have him shade. Let's just take these guys out of the way. Once again, we're paying attention more so to the Browns here. Now that silly Floyd and Fitz, we know what they can do. <clears throat> just pinching just in case it didn't go through. And let's say we shaded over top since we're trying this experiment out. Snap ball, please. Not this is a late thrown ball and everything like that, but wow, the fact that he actually called it Rocky Catch that actually makes me upset. <clears throat> Anyways, here's what happens. So let's go look at the safety that's already down here in between these two guys. So once again, if you're playing over top, once again, if you do it straight it twice, by the way. If you're playing over top, your corners will actually play over top of the receiver. So you see what Cromartie is doing right here? He's literally over the top of the brown here. So once again, once again, like I said, safeties. This time he bolts. Whoever 39 is actually bolts a little bit. But it's still too late in my mind. It's still a little bit too late than where I like it to be. Like right now, I would have my safety turn here. Because, like I said, there's no other route that's coming his way. Now, if it was like, you know, like a post route or something like that, I could see him being a little bit kind of confused of who to guard. But since there's only one route, he should be turning at this point. Well, not at this point, he should turn like maybe about here is where he should be turning. But he waits, he waits. And like I said, Kramari's doing a great job of being over the top like we're telling him to do. So that's one side. Let's look at the other side. We had Gilchrist move, I believe, all the way over and a little bit further away this time. So once again, snap the ball. Revis is over top. Revis is over top. He's still, like, debating on what I should do here. And like I said, if he's even, he's leaving. Any other receiver, or if that was an online dude, he probably would chuck it up. And like I said, Revis probably would do a good job of man coverage and everything like that. But if that was, like, Perriman... Oh, best believe that's a sick, that's a touchdown right there. Like I said, I threw it later, whatever. And unfortunately, John Brown somehow gets a rocket catch or whatever, but still. What's up, Jay Wash? <laughs> 